Welcome to the next video in the A Local Ecosystem series. This video is going to be looking at three dot points being describe the roles of photosynthesis and respiration in ecosystems, identify the general equation for cellular respiration and outline this as a summary of a chain of biochemical reactions and identify the uses of energy by organisms. So these three dot points work very well together. We start off with describing the roles of photosynthesis and respiration. Then we have a look at respiration in more detail by identifying the general equation for aerobic cellular respiration and outlining it as a summary of a chain of chemical reactions. And then we'll see how that links in with identifying the uses of energy by organisms. So let's start off with photosynthesis. So photosynthesis, we can have a look at the word and break it down into two parts. So the first part being photo simply means light. Then if we have a look at the second part of the word synthesis, synthesis means to make. So in this case, we are making something but using light. Okay, so instead of being synthesis photo, so make light, we're not making light. We're making another substance in the presence of light. So if we have a look at the general equation for photosynthesis, we start off with carbon dioxide and water as our reactants. We need sunlight. We also need a substance called chlorophyll, which isn't included here, but we'll talk about in a little bit. And we create sugar in the form of glucose and oxygen. So all of this takes place in our plants. The carbon dioxide and water enter the plant. The sunlight provides the energy and oxygen is released to the atmosphere and the sugar is uh, remains inside the plant in order for it to be able to use it. So respiration on the other hand, the big thing to remember with respiration in this sense is that we are not talking about the process of breathing. So if we have a look at this picture, we have a diagram of somebody breathing where oxygen is going in and carbon dioxide is coming out. So this is breathing. It is sometimes also referred to as respiring or we call it our respiratory system. However, we are looking specifically at cellular respiration. So cellular respiration takes place obviously on the cellular level in every single cell of our body. A special part of the cell called the mitochondria is where respiration takes place and uses the carbon dioxide, sorry, the glucose and oxygen in order to produce energy. So our word equation for respiration is sugar plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. And we'll have a chat about why this picture of Homer probably isn't the greatest one to uh, explain or diagrammatically represent the equation. So let's start by looking at photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process by which plants use the energy from sunlight, so UV light, which is absorbed by the green pigment in the plants called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is found in special parts of the plant cells called chloroplast. So only plant cells contain chloroplast is they're the only type of cells that are able to undergo photosynthesis. And what happens in the chloroplast is then we convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose, which is a specific type of sugar, and oxygen, which is released back into the air. So plants take in carbon dioxide from the air through the leaves and absorb the water up through the plant, up through the roots. So if we have a look at this slide, we have a look at each of the uh, reactants first, what outside forces are needed as well as the products. So if we start with water, as we can see, water is brought up to the leaves from the roots. So water enters the soil in a process called osmosis. So water goes into the roots and then travels up the stem in these special vessels called xylem. We'll be looking at xylem in a lot more detail in the Patterns in Nature topic. Then we have carbon dioxide, which enters the leaves through the stomata. So we've mentioned stomata once or twice before. So stomata are the small pores on the surface of the leaves, which open and close in order to allow gases in and out. We then have UV light, which provides energy for the reaction to take place. And if we didn't have UV light, photosynthesis doesn't happen. So photosynthesis does not happen 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It only happens when the plant is getting this energy from the sun. So then we move on to our products. So as the glucose is produced, most of it is quickly converted into energy for growth. So the plant uses it as a food source. 
And then lastly, the other thing that is produced is oxygen. And again, the oxygen is released into the air out of the stomata. So the carbon dioxide comes into the stomata and the oxygen leaves in that same way. So the carb, yeah, oxygen, sorry. <laughs> the process of photosynthesis can be summarized by a word equation, and then we can express that as a chemical equation using chemical symbols and balancing it to make sure we have the same number of reactants as we do products. At this level, we only need to know the word equation. So it is interesting to have a look at the chemical equation, but you need to be able to commit this uh, equation up here to memory. So the word equation for photosynthesis is our reactants are carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll gives us glucose and oxygen. So in order to get full marks, if you're asked to recall or identify the word equation for photosynthesis, you must include every single part, including the sunlight and the chlorophyll. Because photosynthesis doesn't take place without sunlight and doesn't take place without chlorophyll, if you're missing either one of these two, it simply means that your equation will not take place. Okay, so our balanced equation, we need six molecules of carbon dioxide, six molecules of water, again in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, and that gives us one molecule of glucose and six molecules of oxygen. So plants that manufacture their own food through the process of photosynthesis are sometimes referred to as producers. So the reason why they're named that is they produce or make their own food rather than eat or consume other organisms such as plants or animals and those organisms that need to eat other organisms are referred to as consumers. So hopefully the terms producer and consumer are not foreign to you and we'll be looking at those again when we start to look at our uh, interactions between organisms in ecosystems, in particular feeding relationships. So plants are responsible for harnessing the energy from sunlight for use in ecosystems. So their role as producers start off our food chains with high amounts of energy ready for passing on to consumers. So when we look at food chains, we will be able to identify the fact that if we don't have a producer in our food chain, we have no energy to start off with. Okay, so the producers use the energy from the sun, they create the glucose, uh, herbivores then eat the plants, that energy then is transferred into the herbivores, carnivores eat the herbivores and the energy is passed on and so on and so forth. So we will also see when we look at energy pyramids that there's lots of energy at the level of the producers and as we move up our trophic levels from our producers through to our higher order consumers that the amount of energy decreases. So let's have a look at respiration now. So remember we're talking about cellular respiration, not the process of breathing. So aerobic respiration takes place in the mitochondria of all living cells. So the mitochondria is just like the chloroplast. It is a special part of the cell where respiration takes place. Now the difference between chloroplast and mitochondria is mitochondria are found in every single cell of every single organism. Okay, so mitochondria are found in both plants and animals whereas the chloroplast is only found in plants. So the job is to release the energy for, from the uh, glucose and the oxygen for the organism to use. So the glucose is broken down in the presence of oxygen, so it's classified as a combustion reaction. So the breakdown of a substance in the presence of oxygen to give off energy is technically classified as combustion. Okay, and the products we have are carbon dioxide and water, and also we have energy being released. So energy in the form of ATP, which is a shortened version of adenosine triphosphate, is released as heat from this process and is used for cell functions such as growth, repair, and maintenance. So the organisms use the energy created in respiration in order to be able to do all of the different things that we need to do. So parts of our body that require lots of energy, so our muscle cells in particular, have lots of mitochondria in order to be able to undergo lots of respiration. So we can see here diagrammatic representation, our sugar and our water come into the cell, respiration takes place, carbon dioxide and water leave, and energy is a byproduct. So here we have Homer again. So the reason why I said it was a little bit odd is the fact that he's asleep. If he was creating energy through the donuts that he's eating, he should be able to get up and move around. 
So just like we need to know the, the general equation for photosynthesis, we also need to know the general equation for aerobic cellular respiration. So what we've got here is a summary of a chain of many biochemical reactions which occur in the cells in order to create our energy. Okay, so what we've got here, this word equation that we need to know is a simplified version. Rather than having to remember all of the different steps that lead us to these products, we just summarize it into this here. So just like the photosynthesis word equation, you need to be able to recall the word equation for respiration. So glucose and oxygen are our reactants. Carbon dioxide, water and energy in the form of ATP are our products. So again, you need to ensure that you have every single component in order to um, be able to fulfill that particular requirement of the syllabus. So when we have a look at the word equations for photosynthesis and respiration, the, the uh, reaction for respiration appears to be the reverse of photosynthesis. If you look at them side by side or on top of each other, you will see that if you read it one way for respiration, it would be like you were reading it in the opposite direction for photosynthesis. But this is not technically the case. As we said, respiration is a series of chemical reactions, but these chemical reactions have no similarity to the processes occurring during photosynthesis. In fact, the process of photosynthesis and respiration actually work together in a cycle that is essential to plant life. So as we know, in photosynthesis, the plants use carbon dioxide and water to create oxygen and glucose. So that oxygen is then given out to the atmosphere where organisms use it in respiration and produces carbon dioxide. If the carbon dioxide wasn't produced by um, animals and plants in the process of respiration, there wouldn't be any carbon dioxide for photosynthesis to take place. And then if photosynthesis couldn't take place, there's no glucose for the, um, for the plant to live. So the plants need the glucose uh, in order to obviously carry out its own uh, respiration reactions, but also the glucose converts into another substance called cellulose, which makes up the cell wall of all the plants. And if they don't have uh, the cellulose in the cell wall, the plants are not able to grow in the way that they do. They would be extremely floppy with no real structure. So this table here uh, summarizes the two types of reactions. Okay, so that this can go into the table in your booklet. So we start off with the word equation for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide plus water gives us glucose and oxygen. And for respiration, glucose plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. Now I just realized we are missing our sunlight and chlorophyll simply because in the table couldn't quite get it in there. But make sure that you remember we need sunlight and chlorophyll in order for it to take place. So our reactants, what come together in each of the uh, reactions. So in photosynthesis, carbon dioxide and water are our reactants and glucose and oxygen are our reactions in respiration. The products are what is uh, formed. Glucose and oxygen are formed in photosynthesis and carbon dioxide and water are formed in respiration. So yes, energy is formed, but it's technically not known as a product. It's more known as a byproduct. In which organelles do they occur? So the organelles are the small parts of the cell where the processes take place. So photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplasts, which are only found in plant cells. And mitochondria is where respiration takes place, which are found in both plant and animal cells. So I've just met that one there. So it occurs in which organisms. So is energy required or is energy released? So for photosynthesis, energy is required, and in this case, it's provided by the sun. And in respiration, energy is released in the form of our adenosine triphosphate. So the main function of photosynthesis allows plants to make their own food and grow and therefore feed other animals. It also contributes to the existence of all life by releasing oxygen into the atmosphere. Whereas the main function of respiration is to allow living things to obtain energy for life in order to grow and be sustained. Now, the stages of photosynthesis, there are two stages, the light dependent and the light independent stages, which we will be looking at in the patterns in nature topic. And as we said before, there's a number of different biochemical reactions taking place in respiration. So they can be broken down into three glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and electron transport chain. 
Again, we'll be having a look at those in a little bit more detail when we go on to look deeper at photosynthesis and respiration in the patterns in nature unit. And lastly, is sunlight required, yes or no? So we've already said a few times now, photosynthesis must have sunlight in order to take place. So it only takes place during daylight hours, whereas respiration does not require any form of sunlight and can take place at any time of the day. Okay, and lastly, just a really quick summary of how organisms use energy. So obviously we've looked at a few things throughout the uh, video. So everything that an organism does requires energy. Organisms require energy whether they get it through the process of photosynthesis in plants or through the food that they eat in animals. So they use this energy to move, grow, repair any damage, reproduce, seek, eat and assimilate their food, so digest their food, respond to things happening around them and to keep their bodies warm. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video and it will lead us nicely into the next section on food chains, food webs and energy pyramids. Thank you.